Welcome to Mind, Muscle, and Metabolism, the Jade Tita Podcast. Here you get the in-depth science and practical tools needed to change your body, optimize your health, and elevate your mindset. I'm Dr. Jade Tita, and here is what I want you to know. You are different. You are as unique on the inside chemically as you are on the outside physically. And those differences matter. They matter because there is only one rule to achieving optimal health, fitness, and body change. That rule, do what works for you. My goal is to help you understand exactly how. I'm so excited you're here. Your transformation starts right now. Okay, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about the Eat More Exercise More Protocol or the Athlete Protocol. For those of you who've been following my work, you know I talk about these four different protocols uh, that you can pull. I call them the four different metabolic toggles. And the whole point of this um, sort of uh, structure is to allow people to understand that the metabolism is not a linear, predictable, consistent apparatus. It is changeable, it is adaptable, and therefore we need a changeable system as well. And so there's these four different metabolic toggles that we can pull. The traditional dieter model, which is eat less, exercise more. The couch potato, which is eat more and exercise less. The sort of traditional ancestral human hunter-gatherer, traditional European, traditional American farmer, which I tend to call the eat less, exercise less approach, which is probably better described as an eat less, move more, exercise less approach to sort of distinguish the difference between movements, activities of daily living, and then exercise. And of course, the protocol we're going to talk about today, which is the eat more, exercise more protocol or the athlete protocol. Now, one of the things I say an awful lot that I think bears repeating here is that most people, when they think about how they want to look, function, feel, they want to look, function, and feel like athletes. Isn't it true? Isn't it true that we as humans, when we look out there in the world, we see certain physiques and certain functional abilities, and we would most like to emulate athletes. They're the ones whose physiques we want. We also tend to see them as the most functional people on the planet, and they also tend to be the healthiest as well. And so how do we do this? Well, most people go about that by doing the eat less, exercise more type of approach because that's the only approach that they've ever learned. That's the only approach they've read about in books, whether it's eating less carbs, eating less fat, going keto, intermittent fasting. It's all about eating less of something and then moving and exercising a lot more. And this approach is not is not the approach that athletes use. They do not eat less and exercise more. They eat more and exercise more. In other words, they eat to fuel their activity. And this approach obviously can be used to accomplish one of two different things. Eating more and exercising more can certainly be a great way to burn fat. You can create the two things required for fat loss with this protocol. You can use exercise to drive calorie deficits. So in other words, it's not that we are uh, not creating a potential calorie deficit here. It's that that calorie deficit is much more narrow a smaller calorie gap, a smaller gap between intake of calories and output of energy compared to something like the eat less, exercise more, which be a very wide gap in intake of energy and output of energy. And so you certainly can use this to drive fat loss. And you can see that uh, many athletes are very lean. Typically, uh, they are leaner than the average person in the population for sure. Now, at the same time, you can also push calories up slightly past the amount of effort you're putting out in exercise. And that will, because there's so much exercise, the body is not going to want to lose muscle, but will have the signal to gain muscle or at least maintain muscle, especially especially if that activity is weight training oriented, um, heavy weights stimulating uh, the body to maintain or lay down extra muscle mass due to that activity. 
And so this protocol can be used for either one. And it is probably the best protocol we have to multitask, to increase energy flux through the system and create a situation where we can uh, recomposition the body. So this is the protocol that you will use if you're trying to do something which is very difficult to do but can be done, which is to burn fat and gain or maintain muscle at the same time. This eat more, exercise more protocol is the protocol that you would use. So this is the protocol that is probably the best one to use to look, function, and feel the way most people want to look, function, and feel. And so this is the one that uh, could potentially pay the most dividends in terms of changing the physique around. And it can be used by creating a slight calorie deficit to drive fat loss, a slight calorie surplus, to drive muscle gain, or sort of create this energy flux where we're sort of creating this multitasking effect where we are gaining some muscle potentially while also losing fat, which is very difficult to do. And most people who are seasoned exercisers are not really going to do this well, but certainly beginners can do this very well. And those using anabolic steroids can do this very well. And those who are... uh, you know, very savvy at this, certain genetic types and certain techniques, you can use this to do both. So let's get into this protocol here a little bit. There's really three ways to tackle this protocol. If you're a coach or if you're just um, a savvy fitness enthusiast, I get both of those types listening to this podcast. This is a podcast where most of the people who listen to this are pretty savvy. And I would gather that most people listening are actually coaches themselves. So how do we do this? Well, there's sort of three ways to do this. And of course, if you know my work, you will know, and we should probably get this out of the way right from the get-go, that uh, we never want to be looking at something in isolation as if we give a sort of plan and then we sit back and expect that plan to work. This is always about adjusting. So let's talk about that very quickly. Once you give one of these three options for the EMEM protocol, you then have to sit back and use what I call the AIM process, A-I-M, assess, investigate, modify, like a detective. And what are you assessing? You're really assessing results. Are you getting the fat loss or muscle gain that you want, the body recompositioning that you're wanting? And is your hormonal metabolic system in check? Well, the scale and the measurements will tell you about the body composition changes and sleep, hunger, mood, energy, cravings, exercise, performance, exercise, recovery, libido, erections, menses, digestive function, um, signs and symptoms, joint pains and things like that will tell you about the hormonal situation. Now, all those things are a lot to remember, so I typically use just a very simple acronym to talk about the hormonal biofeedback, SHMEC, sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and cravings. For those who listen to this podcast, they know that I talk about SHMEC probably every single episode, and I will probably continue to do so. SHMEC is sleep, hunger, mood, energy, and cravings. It is a window into your hormonal metabolism, and it is uh, something that is impacted indirectly or directly by your hormones all the time. So you don't need fancy laboratory testing to tell you what's going on with hormones. You just need to know, is my Schmeck in check or out of check? So the two things that you're trying to accomplish or assessing is body composition changes. Are they moving in the right direction? Is Schmeck in check? And of course, there's one more if you want to, which is labs and vitals and things like that. Is hemoglobin A1C and insulin and cholesterol and lipids and all of these things moving in the right direction as well? Now, if they're not, then you go to the next place and you say, well, let me investigate what I can do a little differently. How can I adjust and tweak things? And then, of course, the modify part is that adjustment phase. Then that process starts all over again. So each week, typically, people are going to assess, investigate, and modify. They're going to assess results and schmeck. They're going to investigate what the results were, and then they're going to modify based on those results, tweaking, adjusting, sleuthing like a detective to drive these results. And so the idea here is never just stop based on the three pointers I'm going to give you or the three ways to do this, but you have to use this AIM protocol to adjust as you go, especially if you're working with clients. So hopefully that makes sense, and that's the way that you want to do this. So let's get into 
the different ways to, quote, EM, EM, or eat more, exercise more. Well, the first way to do this is just sort of a one-size-fits-all calorie recommendation. So we can just essentially say, let's drive the calories with a simple equation. For example, the way I like to do this in clinic is I will typically set the calories to 15 times body weight in pounds if the person is overweight. Now, many people who are savvy might say, well, Jade, isn't that interesting? I use that same calculation for an isocaloric sort of intake. But if someone's overweight, I drive this down a little bit. Now, of course, we can adjust as needed, right? Now, if someone's a hard gainer, they tend to be very lean and they're trying to gain muscle, I would probably set calories to 20 times body weight in pounds, right? So I have these two different approaches, either 15 times body weight in pounds if this is someone who's really wanted to use EM, EM to drive fat loss, and 20 times body weight in pounds if this is someone who's really trying to use EM, EM to drive muscle gain. Or the person's overweight, it would be 15 times body weight in pounds is what I use. Or if they're a hard gainer, very lean person, very skinny, who wants to use EMEM, EM, I would go up to 20. Now, again, this is just the beginning, and then you're going to use this AIM process, what's going on with the results and what's going on with Schmeck to adjust and change calories and or macros or whatever you want to do up or down. So this is sort of the one-size-fits-all easy calorie level, not really paying too much attention to macros, just trying to get the calories right. One thing to count, then you go at it in the gym. Now, you might say, well, Jade, what constitutes exercising more? And that is a great question because it's going to depend on the person. But for your average person who's trying to do this, I would say that it's all or most days of the week. So starting right around 4 to 7 workouts per week, 4 workouts probably at a minimum, seven workouts at a maximum for the week. The sweet spot is probably somewhere about five or six. So this would be a four-day split, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, with Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday off, or a five-day split, which would be Monday through Friday with Saturday and Sunday off, or sort of a six-day split. This is best done, or not best done, but can be done with the traditional bodybuilding type of approach with exercise, right, which is, you know, you can do it several different ways. If you're going to do a four-day split, typically that's upper body on Monday, lower body on Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday upper body again, Friday lower body again, Saturday, Sunday off. If you're going to do a five-day split, you can do sort of push on Mondays, pulls on Tuesdays, and then legs and core on Wednesdays, and then a push and a pull again, and then start basically over at legs the next week. So that's typically how that's done with a five-day split. And then, of course, the six-day split or more is splitting up into body parts. So maybe you're doing back and biceps, chest and triceps, shoulders on one day, shoulders and traps maybe, legs on another day, and then basically moving into repeating that cycle and so you're hitting some movements twice per week and uh, others only once per week. There are many many different ways to do that. I'm just giving you sort of the approach here but typically the eat more component of or the exercise more component of EM EM is typically one of these things a four-day split, a five-day split, or a six-day split. This is typically how it's done if you're looking at this from the traditional bodybuilding world. If you're a CrossFitter, it really basically is the same kind of thing. You're not going to be using these splits or pushes and pulls or upper and lower body because you're going to be doing these things uh, pretty much every single workout. But hopefully that explains. Typically four to seven workouts per week, high intensity, plus we don't want to forget about movement, walking, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This needs to be done, period. So, you know, aiming for that sort of sweet spot of 5 to 15,000 steps, right around 10,000 steps per week. All right, so we talked about the calorie levels, just this one-size-fits-all approach of 15 times body weight in pounds or 20 times body weight in pounds, depending on the individual. We also can take a very intuitive approach to this as well. 
And the intuitive approach I like to use that I typically teach is a formula that basically is a three-part formula with the first part of the formula describing the number of meals eaten, the second part of the formula describing the number of meals eaten that are pretty much uh, soup, salad, scramble shakes, and stir fries, or pretty much devoid of fat and starch, basically meat and vegetables or protein and vegetables. And then the last number is typically a mixed meal that includes starch and fat. So for example, I can use in the EMEM protocol, I typically start people off with a 4-2-2 dietary approach. And this is the intuitive approach that I use, which essentially means four meals per day, two of those meals protein and vegetable only, and two of those meals include a mixed macronutrient uh, ratio, starch and or fat included. So some ways to do this intuitive approach to make it very, very easy would be, you know, two meals and two protein shakes or, uh, you know, sort of uh, salad, meat, salad, meat, and then meat, starch, fat, vegetable, meat, starch, fat, vegetables, four, two, two approach, four meals per day, two of them basically meat and vegetables, two of them mixed meals, including starch and fat. And then we can adjust from there using the AIM process. Is that driving things where we want to go? And keep in mind with the intuitive approach, I, I talk about this an awful lot, intuitive eating versus, you know, sort of uh, counting calories and macros. With the intuitive approach, you're using calories and macros as a check to the system. And with the calorie and macro approach, you're using intuition as a check to the system. In other words, the intuitive approach really relies very heavily on schmeck to start, the hormonal piece. And then we'll go into sort of driving and looking at math, calorie math and macronutrient math later. Whereas the calorie and macro approaches start with the math and then use schmeck to back check. For example, what I mean by this is if you're doing EMEM -EM in intuitive fashion, following this 422 approach, and after you assess, investigate, modify using this AIM process, and you find that you're not getting the results that you want, maybe you're after fat loss and the fat loss is not coming, then you can back check the calories and macros. Take a three-day diet recall of the past three days and see how you're doing, or maybe you're trying to drive muscle gain and it's not working, then you might want to add a meal or uh, subtract a meal or something like that. So for example, you go through this intuitive process after two weeks, you assess, investigate, and you see that I'm not really getting the results I want in muscle gain. I need to go back and back check my calories and macros. And I find that my calories look pretty low compared to the amount of activity that I'm putting out. And so maybe I add a meal and that 4-2-2 approach turns into a 5-2-3 approach. Five meals per day, two of them salad and meat or vegetable and meat, and three of them mixed macronutrient meals. Maybe that turns into breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a post-workout and pre-workout shake. And so the adjustment happens there. And so again, these protocols, what we want to do as humans oftentimes, we want to hear these protocols and be like, oh, Jade said, do it exactly this way. And then we don't want to change them when really we need to think about these protocols as beginning points only. So now we've talked about the off-the-shelf calorie approach and the intuitive approach. And now we'll cover the much more in-depth approach of the macronutrient approach. This approach is a little bit more complex, but so I'll slow down here because I know I like to talk really quickly. But this is the one for you coaches that you're probably going to want to eventually gravitate towards if, as you go through your assessment and your investigation and your modifications, you're not getting results. You may want to move them right to this macro counting approach. Now, you'll still potentially have to adjust this a little bit, but this is the way that I like to do this. First of all, I like to start with protein. Why do I start with protein when I start with macronutrients? The major reason why is because protein is very satiating, and it also is one of those macronutrients that drives towards muscle gain more likely than fat gain, especially if we're exercising a ton. So I really like to use protein to start. So what I do is in the EMEM protocol, I set protein grams equal to body weight in pounds. 
Now, this is a lot, but this is based on both research and my clinical experience. So for a 200-pound person, this would be 200 grams of protein per day. That's how I start my macronutrient calculation. Now, we have to do some math here because we have to figure out, okay, well, how many calories is that total, right? And so in addition to setting protein as the grams, or grams of protein equal to pounds of body weight, I'm also going to set the macronutrient ratio to 40, 30, 30, 40% carbohydrates, 30% protein, and 30% fat. So based on those two things, we now know that 30% of the calories is 200 grams of protein. So we have to figure out how many calories is that. Well, we know that there's four calories per gram of protein. So 200 grams times four calories equals 800 calories of protein. Now that we know that 800 is 30% of the total calories, we can calculate the total calories. 800 divided by 0 .30 gives us 2,666, right? 800 divided by 0 .30 it gives us 2,666 total calories for this 200-pound person. Now we can calculate the carbs, which are 40% of that. So we would take 2,666 times 0 .40. Let me just shut down that call. Yo. Okay, so now we know the carbs equal 266 calories times 0 .40 because the carbs are 40% of total calories. And then we divide that by 4 because there are 4 calories per gram of carb. So that gives us 266 grams of carbs. And then we do the same thing for fat, 2,666 calories times 0 .30. That's the percent of calories fat is. Divided by 9 because there's 9 calories per gram of fat gives us 89 grams of fat. So now we have total cows, 2,666. We know the protein is 200 grams, the carbs 266 grams, and then the fat is 89 grams based on this calculation. And so this gives us a very specific starting point. And then of course, we will adjust from there. So from our perspective now, we have three different ways of doing this. One, an off-the-shelf calorie count. Set the calories to 15 times body weight in pounds if the person's overweight. Or set the calories to 20 times body weight in pounds if the person is a hard gainer. The second approach is a very intuitive approach. We can use this 4-2-2 intuitive approach where we're doing four meals per day. Two of those meals are just vegetables and protein, and two of those meals are mixed macronutrients, including vegetables, protein, starch, and or fat. And then the third approach is this very specific macronutrient ratio, setting the protein grams equal to pounds of body weight and the macronutrient ratio to 40, 30, 30, carbs, protein, and fat, and then back calculating from there the entire macronutrient profile. And then, of course, we begin to assess, investigate, modify. Each week, we get the body fat percent, the weights, the measurements, whatever we're doing, and we can do assessments of Schmeck each day and or each week. How is the sleep, the hunger, the mood, the energy, the cravings? How is the hormonal balance? If we're getting the goals we want in terms of body composition change and Schmeck is in check, we keep going until that does not work. Now, typically, how long will the EMEM -EM protocol work? I love to typically do this in blocks of about three months. Typically, your traditional bodybuilding block, three months worth of this type of approach. Obviously, you also could use this approach just on days that you train and use a more eat less, exercise less approach on days you don't train. You also could use this EMEM -EM approach at particular times of the menstrual cycle. Two ways to do this. 
One way is to uh, basically use the EMEM approach when estrogen is absolutely uh, increased. That would be the week after menses. I'm sorry, the week uh, before ovulation and after ovulation, or you can do it when the relative ratio of estrogen to pre progesterone is dominant, an estrogen dominant time, which would be the first two weeks of the menstrual cycle. Week one would be during menses, and then the second week after that would be the week after menses or the week before ovulation. You can use it then as well. Now, I've covered all of these um, ways of cycling. There's an entire uh, podcast. I think I did two of them. I think it's episode 11 and 12 on using these four different uh, toggling methods. So you can go back and listen to those, and I believe it's episode number two or potentially three of using and cycling uh, the diet with the menstrual cycle. So hopefully this gives you uh, a really sort of in-depth approach of using the EMEM type of a protocol, basically how much exercise people are doing and these three different ways of doing this and also how, how to assess, investigate, and modify and adjust, which you will have to do. The important thing to remember is uh, eat more, exercise more is not something that you'll necessarily do year long, although it's probably better to do that all year long than it would be to do eat less, exercise more for sure, or eat more, exercise less. It is the best athletic protocol out there. You also could use this cycled with the seasons. EMEM -EM is a great time, spring, summer, when you're wanting to be outside and doing a lot of activity. This is a great time to do it. Also works great for people who are cardio junkies and things like that. One thing I'll mention before we stop and I stop rambling on here is that one of the things you'll notice is that uh, the 40-30-30 macronutrient ratio, why do we upregulate the carbohydrates in the EMEM -EM protocol and have 40% carbohydrate? If you remember in the Eat Less, Exercise Less protocol, which I talked about last episode, we had a 30-40-30 ratio in macronutrients. Well, you have to remember that insulin is primarily driven by carbohydrates. In some people, it's also strongly um, driven by protein as well. But the carbohydrates drive more insulin production during this extra activity. And insulin is the most anabolic hormone we have. It's the hormone that drives these nutrients into the cells to get them fed, to help them repair, to help them adapt. So that's why the extra carbohydrate is there. And this is a very good approach. One thing, caveat here, is a lot of people say, well, does that eat more, exercise more mean I can do burgers and pizzas and things like that? It does lend itself well to that every once in a while. But the truth of the matter is you really want to keep this very clean, meaning bland, splander starches, a uh, blander diet. Remember, if you have a very highly palatable hedonistic sort of dietary approach, you could potentially go off the rails and have issues here. So this is going to be, you know, a diet that includes a whole lot of starch, but probably still doesn't drive up fat and starch too much within those meals. We're not talking burgers, pizzas, and barbecues, and biscuits, and things like that. We're talking more like steak, baked potato, and broccoli or rice, you know, chicken breast and green beans and things like that. So um, this potential for overdoing fat and starch still exists, and you don't want to push yourself into sort of this eat more, exercise less state. Some of those foods can be highly inflammatory and, uh, you know, cause some issues with uh, inability to recover and also may sort of not allow you to get results in terms of fat loss if you're really driving up those calories. Now, at the same time, if you're a hard gainer, you may need to include some of those foods. Um, one, of the, one of the things I like to do with the hard gainers is give them as one of their meals a you know, protein shake that includes banana and peanut butter and things like that to drive up the calories because they will need those because their metabolism burns through them so quickly. So those are some things to think about. I hope that's useful for you, and I will see you at the next episode. Hey there, real quick, if you are a little bit confused on this particular episode about dealing with the EMEM, -EM, 
you go to my website, uh, www.jadetita.com, click on podcast and go to episode 33, eat more, exercise more episode. I have an infographic on that page for you to download that will let you see in a graphical representation of how to, I do these calculations for EM. EM. Hope that's useful for you. And please do me a favor. If you love the content, please go over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. This is the way people find the podcast and allow me to keep doing this. I greatly appreciate you doing that for me. Thank you so much, and I will see you at the next podcast.